Hey guys, what's going on? Gary Next here, bringing you another video on Genshin Impact. First of all, thank you so much for the support on my previous video where I discussed the builds for Zhongli. It's got over 1,500 views. Thank you so much for that. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Xin Yan, the new 4-star Pyro Claymore user. So her ascension stat is attack percent, and her normal attack performs up to 4 consecutive strikes. Charge attack drains stamina over time to perform continuous spinning attacks against all nearby enemies. At the end of the sequence, perform a more powerful slash. So this is the same as the other Claymore user. And these are her multipliers for her normal attacks. She has an average multiplier. The Claymore user with the highest multiplier is actually Razor, followed by Diluc, Noel, then Xing Yan. Below her will be Beidou and Chongyun. So her multipliers are not that bad. Her elemental skill sweeping further, Xing Yan brandishes her instrument dealing pyro damage on nearby enemies, forming a shield made out of her audience's passion. The shield's damage absorption scales based on Xing Yan's defense and on the number of enemies hit. Hitting 0 to 1 enemy grants shield level 1, hitting 2 enemies grants shield level 2, and hitting 3 or more enemies grants shield level 3, which will also deal intermittent pyro damage to nearby enemies. The shield has the following properties. When unleashed, it infuses Xing Yan with Pyro, and it also has a 250% damage absorption effectiveness against Pyro damage. So these are the multipliers. The shield duration is 12 seconds and the cooldown is 18 seconds, so there will be a 6 seconds downtime for the shield. Her elemental burst Reef Revolution, strumming rapidly, Xing Yan launches nearby enemies and deals physical damage to them, hyping up the crowd. The sheer intensity of the atmosphere will cause explosion that deals pyro damage to nearby enemies. So these are the multipliers. The cooldown is 15 seconds and energy cost is 60. That's a pretty okay cooldown and energy cost. It's not that bad. So this is how the animation looks. The one at the top is her elemental skill and the one at the bottom is her elemental burst. Now let's take a look at her passive. Her first passive, when a perfect cooking is achieved on a defense boosting dish, Xing Yan has a 12% chance to obtain double the product. Her second passive decreases the number of enemies sweeping further must hit to trigger each level of shielding. Shield level 2 lead in requirement reduced to 1 enemy hit, and shield level 3 wraith requirement reduced to 2 or more enemies hit. So essentially making it easier for you to get a higher level shield. Her third passive, characters shielded by sweeping further deals 15% increased physical damage. So she's able to give increased physical damage to anyone protected by her shield, and that should include herself. So if your main DPS utilizes physical damage, having Xing Yan can help increase your damage even further. For her constellation, her C1, upon scoring a crit hit, increases attack speed of Xing Yan's normal and charge attacks by 12% for 5 seconds. Can only occur once every 5 seconds. So this will boost up her damage potential a little bit, her C2, Reef Revolution's physical damage has its crit rate increased by 100% and will form a shield at shield level 3 Wraith when cast. This sentence is a bit confusing to me, whether that means that she will increase her crit rate by 100%, which means it doubles your crit rate. For example, if you have 30% crit rate and this will increase your crit rate to 60%, or that your crit rate will increase to 100% making it so that it guarantees a crit. I guess we have to test this out when she is released in the game. Regardless, this will amp up her burst damage by a lot because she can crit easily. And this also gives you the ability to have the permanent uptime on her shield, so where you can cycle between her skills and burst. Her C3 increases the level of sweeping fervor by 3, maximum upgrade level is 15, so this will give you more damage and more protection. Her C4, sweeping fervor's swing damage decreases opponent's physical resistance by 15% for 12 seconds. This will further increase your physical damage output. Her C5 increases the level of Reef Revolution by 3, maximum upgrade level is 15, so this will give you more damage. And her C6 decreases the stamina consumption of Xing Yan's charge attacks by 30%. Additionally, Xing Yan's charge attack gains an attack bonus equals to 50% of her defense. This could change your playstyle to focus more on charge attack instead of normal attack, but essentially it increases your damage output. In my opinion, her kit revolves around a lot of physical damage, and the pyro damage is more of an add-on to deal at some extra damage. So if you are looking to build her as a main DPS, I would suggest focusing on physical damage build. Reason being, her elemental skill's pyro damage only activates when there are more than 2 enemies hit by the skills. That means when you are taking on bosses like the cubes, the flowers, the wolf, she's not able to utilize her pyro damage. 
unless you have her at C2, which gives you the shield when you use her burst. Even then, it's a 15 seconds cooldown and a 60 energy cost burst, so there will be downtime for the shield. And when you have the shield active, you gain a 15% physical damage. If you happen to have her at C4, that's potentially a 30% increased physical damage. Hence, I will focus on physical damage if I'm going to use her as a main DPS. In this case, I would go with a 4-piece Bloodstained for increased physical damage and charge attack damage. At this point, we are not sure if the 4-piece effect stacks with her C6 or not. If it does, Bloodstained could be insane for her. Alternatively, you can go with a 4-piece Retracing Blight, especially if you have her at C2, because that will give you a permanent uptime on her shield. That means a permanent increased damage of 40%. Otherwise, a 4-piece Gladiator will work pretty similarly as well. This set is pretty good if you don't have any constellation on her, because the increased normal attack damage is not dependent on the shield, so you don't have to worry too much. For the stats, if you have her at C0 to C5, you want to look for attack percent on timepiece, physical damage bonus on goblet, and attack percent or crit rate or crit damage on headpiece. This is because defense scaling is only for the shield strength from C0 to C5, so defense doesn't actually increase her damage output. For substats, you want to look for attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and defense percent. If you have her at C6 and you want to focus on her charge attack, then you can look for defense percent on timepiece, physical damage bonus on goblet, defense percent or crit rate or crit damage on headpiece. For substats, you want to look for attack percent, defense percent, crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. For weapons, you can take any of the 5 star weapons, especially the unforged. This weapon will be in the new weapon banner, and it seems to be designed for her. Increases shield strength by 20%, scoring hits on opponents increases attack by 4% for 8 seconds, maximum of 5 stacks, that's potentially 20% increase in attack, can only occur once every 0.3 seconds. While protected by a shield, this attack increase effect is increased by 100%, so that means it's a 40% increase in attack. For 4 star options, you can take the white blind if you have her at C6, this will give you even more defense. Otherwise, you can take the prototype animus, both of these options are craftable weapons. For pain players, the black cleave slasher will be a good option as well. If you are using her as a support to utilize the shield and the physical damage bonus that the shield gives, then you can consider using a 2 piece gambler for more damage on skill, and then slap on any other 2 piece set. If you want to focus more on burst and then switch, then you can go with a 4-piece Scholar or a 4-piece Exile so for faster recharge so you can use your burst more often. Or you can go with a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige so to increase your burst damage and also giving your main DPS an increase of 20% attack. For stats, you want to look for attack percent or energy recharge on timepiece, attack percent on goblet, and attack percent or crit rate or crit damage on the headpiece. For substats, you want to look for attack percent, energy recharge, crit rate, and crit damage. For weapons, you can go with any of the weapons that was mentioned just now. You can also go with a sacrificial great sword for more energy recharge. As for team comms, if you are using her as a main DPS, Bennett is a fantastic option because Bennett can be your healer, attack booster, and also gives you the pyro resonance which gives you 25% attack. So you can use the remaining two slots for characters to proc elemental reactions, for example, uh, Cryo and Electro to proc Superconduct. So this will further decrease the physical resistance of the monsters so you can deal more damage. Or you can go with any other combinations of elements to break shields or any characters for crowd control purposes. If you are using her as a support, she'll only be a great support if your main DPS is using physical damage, for example, Razor. Otherwise, she will only be giving shields and nothing else, so that's not really a good support. For the other slots, you want to make sure they actually benefit your main DPS and not Sing Yen. So with the information we have as of now, that is how I would build Sing Yen. Of course, all these that we discussed may become invalid if Mihoyo decides to change anything upon the release of the character. So consider these ideas, but make sure to double check in the game when the character is released. Join my Discord if you wish to discuss more about character builds, link will be in the description below. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for today, take care and have a great day ahead.